Hi, welcome to Enchiridion. Hundreds of millions of years ago, giant insects the size of medium-sized birds thrived on Earth. Imagine a huge equatorial warm forest that at the time covered the center of France. And imagine a predatory, freaky, flying prehistoric beast, one of the largest known insects to have ever existed. Meganeura, a giant carboniferous griffin fly, related superficially to present-day dragonflies. They lived around 304 to 299 million years ago. That was around 100 million years before the advent of dinosaurs. Giant griffin flies terrorized the skies of those times, a marvelous and special sight. During the Carboniferous, from 360 to 299 million years ago, other insects were also extremely large, such as Paleodictyoptera, a group of Paleopterous insects, and Dictyoptera, a massive cockroach. Meganeuro was long emblematic of the giant insects of the Paleozoic, remaining the largest known insect until the discovery of Meganeuropsis in the United States in the middle of the 20th century, which is a few centimeters larger. So, what is the difference between a griffin fly and a dragonfly? How big was Meganeuro? How could it grow to such massive sizes relative to today's dragonflies and insects? And what led to their extinction? First discovered in France in 1880, Meganeuro is currently a contender for the largest known flying insect to ever exist. It hunted prey with enormous eyes, toothed mandibles, and sharp leg spines. Although many people claim that it's a dragonfly, the truth is that it's a slightly different type of animal, a griffinfly, superficially similar to a dragonfly, yet different morphologically speaking. The first difference between the two is due to their bane patterns. Meganeura means large banes or large nerve, and they have similar bane patterns in their wings, whereas dragonflies have varying patterns. A second difference is that Meganeura have a large number of appendages at the end of their abdomen. These appendages may have been used for mating, laying eggs, or for anchoring. And the third and final difference is that these insects were probably slower than dragonflies due to their large size. Fossils were discovered in the French Stephanian coal measures of Commentry in 1880. In 1885, French paleontologist Charles Brongnier described and named the fossil Meganeura, large nerd, referring to the network of banes on the insect's wings. Meganeura permian was first described by researchers in Kansas in 1937 as having a wingspan of over 2 feet. Another fine fossil specimen was discovered in 1979 at Boltzover in Derbyshire. The species of Meganeura include Meganeura brongniardi, Mongi, and Bishery. It had a wingspan of almost 2.5 feet, and a length of almost 1.3 feet long. It is usually considered that the maximum possible size of an insect is dictated by the amount of oxygen available for respiration. And why is this important? Because back in the Carboniferous, the oxygen content in the atmosphere was at up to 35%, whereas nowadays our atmosphere is at 21% oxygen. Its larvae were also considerably large, possibly as much as 1 feet long. The insects of the Carboniferous period were able to grow to behemoth sizes for a variety of reasons. Insects like Meganeura breathe through a system of tracheal tubes that carry oxygen directly into their internal tissues. A higher amount of oxygen in the atmosphere would supply a passive boost to the tissues with no effort on the part of Meganeura, allowing for more immense sizes. Further study into the relationship between gigantism and oxygen availability has found approval in the scientific community. Recent analysis of the fly energetics of modern insects and birds suggest that both the oxygen levels and air density provide an upper bound in size. However, the controversy arises when we consider the presence of very large Meganeuridae with wingspans rivaling those of Meganeura during the Permian, when the oxygen content of the atmosphere was relatively lower than in the Carboniferous, which has created a problem with the oxygen-related explanations for their size. Nonetheless, despite the fact that Meganeurids had the largest known wingspans, their bodies weren't as heavy, being smaller than those of several living Coleoptera. 
a group of insects. Meaning that they were not true giant insects, rather, they were only giant in comparison with their living relatives. A second reason proposed by scientists to explain the size of these Carboniferous prehistoric creatures is that there were barely any predators or competition, with multiple scientists suggesting that the lack of aerial vertebrate predators allowed Terrigo insects to evolve to maximum sizes during the Carboniferous and Permian periods, possibly accelerated by an evolutionary arms race for increasing body size between plant feeding Haliodictyoptera and Meganized Subterra as their predators. The evolutionary arms race meant that there was a struggle between competing sets of co-evolving species that develop adaptations and counter-adaptations against each other, resembling an arms race. Finally, a third reason proposed by scientists is that insects that developed in water before becoming terrestrial as adults grew bigger as a way to protect themselves against the high levels of oxygen. A combination of these factors would help explain, to a greater extent, this gigantism. It lived in what is now Western Europe, specifically Coventry in France and Bolsover in Derbyshire, England. It lived during the end of the Carboniferous. It was carnivorous, Meganera most probably hunted and fed similar to the way that dragonflies do nowadays, though its larger size may suggest that it had a wider range of creatures to choose to eat. Aside from other invertebrates, insects, potential prey may have also included small amphibians that were rapidly evolving to terrestrial life. Meganura used their long spine-covered legs to grab and hold their prey. The only known predator of Meganura was the huge amphibian Proterogyrinus. They were most likely hunters in flight, like hawks, with large and contiguous eyes, with a field of vision of nearly 360 degrees, a vision upwards and downwards, and solid legs with spikes to seize prey, traits of dragonfly hawks. These insects live near the edge of bodies of water, such as ponds and streams. They spend most of their life in the air, only landing to mate, lay eggs, seek shelter from storms, and occasionally eat their prey. Larvae lived in vertical burrows in areas where there was water. In the stage of life of larvae, they were ambush predators, hunting small amphibians, other insects, and spiders. As they grew older and turned into adults, their prey would change to other dragonflies, terrestrial prey such as the early reptile Petrolacosaurus, and mayflies. Falling oxygen levels after the Carboniferous meant that the giant insects would have insufficient oxygen to maintain their size, leading to the evolution of smaller forms, or the complete extinction of the larger ones. The decline in atmospheric oxygen and the rise of birds contributed to their demise. First, oxygen levels are key for insects because they don't have lungs. Rather, they rely on air flowing through a series of openings across their bodies called spiracles which connect directly to the tissues that require oxygen. Second, as ancient dinosaurs evolved the ability to fly, eventually becoming modern birds, they put a cap on insect size through predation and competition. The earliest known bird, Archaeopteryx, appeared around 150 million years ago. Birds were more agile and faster than giant insects. The Great Permian-Triassic Crisis, around 255 million years ago, a major one for all biodiversity, probably also caused the disappearance of these large, dragonfly-like creatures and other giant insects and arthropods that inhabited terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems during the Paleozoic. The question that remains is the possible existence of giant insects nowadays. Large insects still persist, all in the intertropical regions, with beetles more than 18 centimeters long, butterflies around 20 centimeters wide, and stick insects that are around 50 centimeters long. However, none of these insects has the wingspan or body size, similar to Paleozoic insects. The largest dragonfly today doesn't exceed 20 centimeters, with a filiform body. Additionally, this gigantism has long overshadowed the existence of smaller Carboniferous insects. It is only recently that the highlighting of these small insects, alongside the famous giants, changed the vision, perhaps a little simplistic, that we had of the ecosystems of this period. Meganura has seen appearances in Walking with Monsters, Prehistoric Park, 
and the video game Ark Survival Evolved. Hundreds of millions of years ago, giant insects were common on Earth. They were formidable hunters in the Paleozoic sky, where they were the greatest predators until the end of the Permian, when the first gliding reptiles appeared. This, along with a combination of other factors, led to the demise of such creatures and the rise of birds such as Archaeopteryx. Simply the thought of such a prehistoric beast inspires awe. Like it's plain cool to have a creature with a wingspan exceeding two feet. Meganura once had the title of the largest insect to ever exist, but was then dethroned by another creature, Meganoropsis. The advent of insects in the Permian meant a world dominated by diverse, weird-looking creatures. Meganura. Huge. Predatory. Freaky. Thank you for watching. Next week's episode will be the dinosaurs on Earth, Succomimus, so stay tuned for that one. It's a really detailed video on one really cool Spinosaurus, so that's nice. This is Sankai Ridian. see you next time.